Where did the wind go, Captain? I don't know, matey. Hiding from us, that's for sure. What are you going to do, Captain? Skippy and I can't take this heat anymore. Captain, what is that? Well, blow me down. It's some strange ship. There'd be a lot of gold on board that. Prepare for attack, men! Fire again! Skippy? Hmm. Looks like we have a major problem here. Who the blazes are you? Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm Dr. Ronald Oxborough. I'm a geologist and geophysicist. I've come to clean up this mess. This is the 21st century. Judging by your clothes and this ship, I assume you're from an earlier century? What gibberish is this? We're pirates and rulers of these waters. You must have heard of me, Captain Calico Jack. And these are my brave mates, and Bonnie, Skippy, and Brutus. And Pedro Abad. Ah, walk the plank. Walk the plank! Fascinating. So, this is your first encounter with petroleum, then? Petroleum? petroleum? What in tarnations is petroleum? Well, petroleum, or oil as we also call it, is a naturally occurring liquid that forms deep underground. It's made from the remains of animals and plants that lived millions of years ago in a marine environment. These remains were covered by layers of sand and silt. Heat and pressure from these layers cause the remains to turn into what we today call crude oil. So, where was that monster of a ship going with all that oil, Dr. Oxborough? That ship is a tanker, Captain. Tankers carry crude oil to factories called refineries. At the refinery, the crude oil is cleansed of contaminants and impurities and chemically altered to create other fuel products like gasoline, kerosene, diesel and jet fuels, as well as industrial and electricity fuels. These products are then used to power cars, ships, planes and also to generate electricity for homes and factories. Ah, we have to save those lads. Oh, not to worry. My helicopter pilot will see to that. In the meantime, I suggest we head for that island to assess the damage. Blistering misfortune! Look at what you pirates got me into! Bah, so what? The oil man here said that oil is just the remains of animals and plants. What is so bad about it? That's true, Captain, but an oil spill is still not good for the environment. Yeah? How so? Well, for a start, oil spills damage beaches and reefs, which are homes for mammals and waterfowl, and nurseries for fish. Also, they kill large numbers of fish by suffocation and exposure to toxins. Marine plants like algae and seaweed can also die when the oil forms a film at the surface of the water, blocking out sunlight and limiting photosynthesis. The plants and animals that don't die are then at risk of toxins from the oil accumulating or building up in their tissues. The concentration of these toxins in the tissues of organisms increases as it goes up the food chain, from plankton and marine plants, to smaller fish, to larger fish, and then to birds or mammals, and eventually humans. This process is known as biomagnification. Over time, this can result in deformities and abnormal development in fish. That means no fish! We're going to starve! Knock it off, Skippy. Dr. Oxborough, is it safe for us to be here with all this oil? 
for now it is, Miss Body, but extended contact with oil can cause skin irritations and visual impairments. As you can smell, oil has a very strong odor. Inhalation of its fumes can cause headaches, dizziness, confusion, nausea, and vomiting. Not very nice. So what are we going to do? Clean it up. Here, put on these gloves and take these shovels. Henry! Another tanker! Do spills happen often, Dr. Oxbow? Unfortunately, they occur quite often all over the world, sometimes on land and mostly at sea. In 1989, an oil tanker named the Exxon Valdez hit a reef in the Alaskan waters and leaked over 11 million gallons of oil into the ocean. It was once considered to be the worst oil spill in US history, but that was until the Deep Horizon spill happened. The Deep Horizon spill? Sounds awful, Dr. Oxborough. Yes, it was. The Deep Horizon spill is now the worst oil spill to affect the United States and one of the largest ever to have happened in the world. The spill began on April 20th, 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico after an explosion on the Deep Horizon drilling rig caused a well on the seafloor to leak. Over 185 million gallons of oil spilled into the Gulf for three months before engineers were able to stop it. Shiver me timbers. Oh look, we can see La Trinity from here. Aye. That's where we were heading before that oil tanker appeared. Well, that beautiful island, La Trinité, or Trinidad as we call it, also suffered one of the biggest oil spills in history. In July 1979, during a rainstorm, two oil tankers, the Atlantic Express and the Aegean Captain, collided not far off the coast of Tobago, spilling about 90 million gallons of oil. Unfortunately, the island also gets polluted with a lot of oil from the land as well. Old pipelines, broken wells, and discharge from mechanic shops drain into rivers and eventually make it out to sea. Are these the only countries that suffer from oil spills? Most definitely not, Miss Anne. Oil spills, both on land and sea, occur in many countries all over the world. The largest oil spill ever recorded took place in Kuwait in 1991 during a war and was an act of sabotage. Iraqi forces deliberately opened the valves of oil tankers in order to slow the invasion of American troops. The spill was more than three times the size of Deep Horizon. Dr. Oxborough, how are we ever going to clean up all of this oil? And where is Pedro? Have no fear, my friend. Your little parrot will be back. As for cleaning up an oil spill, it's not impossible, but it's never easy. Let me explain some of the techniques that are used to clean up oil spills on land and sea. We can use the fire from my stove to burn up the oil. <laughs> yes, that actually is one method of getting rid of an oil spill on water. It's called controlled burning, but the smoke produced by the fires make it not very environmentally friendly. Well, maybe we can scoop it up with these shovels you gave us. Yes, Captain. Shovels along with rakes, tarmats, high-pressure washing tools and cleaning machines that strip oil from sand are often used for cleaning oil on land. On water, an inflated tube called an oil boom is used to soak up and prevent the oil from spreading, but it's not always a very effective method in rough waters. Another method that's often used is called skimming, which involves separating the oil from the water. There are three types of skimmers, wear, drum and oleophilic. Wear skimmers allow oil floating on the surface of water to flow over a wear and collect in a dish. What is a wear? A wear is another term for a dam, Brutus. You said there are three skimmers. What are the others? Drum skimmers use a rotating drum that's coated with a bonding agent to capture the oil. Oleophilic means oil attracting. Oleophilic skimmers use belts, discs or continuous mop chains of oleophilic materials to remove the oil from the water's surface. 
What about soap? I like soap. Yes, my friend. That's another method as well. Dispersants, as they are called, are chemicals used to break up the oil, like soap does, and prevent settling and clumping. Unfortunately, these dispersants are toxic to marine and human life, and the dispersed oil droplets can find their way into deeper water and destroy coral reefs. Dr. Oxborough, if we just leave the oil, wouldn't it eventually go away? Yes, wind and waves help spread and disperse the oil, and through a process called bioremediation, microorganisms will break down the oil and what remains will be evaporated. But such a process will take months, and leaving a spill for such a long period of time will do more damage than good. Nature needs some assistance. That's why cleaning crews use fertilizers along with the microorganisms to speed up the process. There are so many methods, Dr. Oxbro. How do cleaning crews decide which one they should use? Well, cleaning crews choose their method depending on the type and amount of oil spilled, weather conditions, the environment around the spill, and the effectiveness of the response methods. But Doctor, we don't have dispersants, booms, skimmers, or micro-whatisms. How are we supposed to clean this spill without them? Leave that to me. Pedro! Ah! Ah! What's wrong with him? Your parrot, unfortunately, has fallen prey to the oil spill. When birds preen, they end up ingesting the oil that's on their feathers, causing kidney and liver damage and digestive tract irritation. Poor Pedro! Have no fear though, a nice warm bath and stomach coating medicines to prevent more oil from entering his stomach is all that he needs. Ah! Oil bad! Oil bad! Ah! Dr. Oxborough, what are some things that can be done to prevent oil spills in the future? In my opinion, only less dependence on oil will stop oil spills from happening. We must promote the development and use of clean power sources such as solar and also the very one that drives your ship, Captain, wind energy. Much obliged, matey, for teaching us a valuable lesson today. You're welcome, Captain. Farewell, Hello, my, my friends. friends. Captain! 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 The wind has returned! Huddle around, mates. I had a dream of the future to tell you about. <laughs>